the Phil Travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and say we're in Positano on the Amalfi Coast here in Italy. And today I want to talk about are some of the tourist traps you'll probably find when you come here to Italy. And since I'm on the Amalfi Coast, I might as well start with staying and eating on the Amalfi Coast is a total tourist trap because this area is overrun with tourists. And this is honestly one of the most beautiful coastlines in the world so they know that they can charge double and give half the level of service and half the level of food and half the level of tastiness because so many tourists come here so do be prepared for that when you do come here so the restaurants will be more the accommodation will be crazy your tours and stuff will cost more when you are here now i'm not saying don't come here because this is a gorgeous place to be but just be aware that it's going to be a bit tourist trappy when you're here with all the tourists everywhere you're going to be so maybe to avoid some of the tourist trappiness of here, maybe you make the Amalfi Coast like a day trip if you're staying in Naples or Sorrento or Salerno, but just, just be aware of that one, okay? Now, probably one of the most popular tourist traps that you know about when you think of Italy are the gondolas in Venice, and those are super tourist traps because they are not cheap. They are expensive to go on, and if you want them to sing, it's probably gonna cost you some more, but if you're going to be in Venice and you've always wanted to do a gondola, well, you know what? Go ahead and do it, but just realize it kind of is a tourist trap. Now, I know the first two tourist traps are really places you really need to go, but there's another set of tourist traps I think you need to be aware of when you come here to Italy, and that is any restaurant that's near a major site that has a menu with lots of pictures in it and like four or five languages. Look, there's a lot of tourist traps restaurants that are here. We actually have a video of 10 ways to know if you're in a tourist trap restaurant in Italy. But honestly, if you're ever going around, if you're a place like Amalfi or Positano or wherever, they're all kind of tourist trap restaurants. But if you're in cities like Venice or Florence or Rome, anything that's near one of the major sites, it's gonna be a tourist trap restaurant. Go two or three blocks farther away and you'll find locals, you'll hear the local language. Those are the restaurants you should go to. Also, if you see they have salt and pepper on the table already, that's not a place for Italians because Italians know that the chef already knows what they're doing. Now, the next tourist trap I have for you is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Look, so many people want to go there to get their picture holding up the Leaning Tower, and I understand that. But I'm going to tell you, do not make it a full day trip. Make it a half day. Go in, get your picture. For me, actually, the baptistry behind the church is actually more beautiful, but just know that Pisa in itself, the Leaning Tower is a total tourist trap for people going there. So if you're gonna be in Florence, go to Lucca instead for your day trip instead of Pisa, because yeah, sometimes you're a little disappointed that really all you get is holding up the uh, Leaning Tower, right? Now, another tourist trap I think you need to avoid when you are here, and you see this a lot less these days than you did before, is if you're in Rome or by any of the kind of Roman ruins kind of stuff, and you see a gladiator or a Roman soldier, a Roman centurion, and they want to get your picture with you. And you'll see, you'll be with your kids taking picture yourself, and they'll come up all friendly and be like, hey, why don't you take a picture with me? And you're like, sure, that'd be fun because you're so friendly. And then they want you to pay. And you're like, wait, I just thought we were a friendly picture taker. It's like, no, no, that's how we make money. And then you start to see, if you don't pay them, how they pillage Carthage, okay? So do be aware of that, especially with your kids. Now, if you're up in Verona, which is a beautiful town in the Veneto, I do want to let you know that going to Juliet's balcony and Juliet's house is kind of a tourist trap because, no, that's not Juliet's house. That's actually a marketing thing from like the 70s that really got people going there. So don't think that's her real thing. So in that way, some people fall into that trap thinking it really is Juliet's balcony. No, 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 no. It's just a really great marketing ploy that the Verona people did. And when you're there, you know, go and enjoy it because it's one of those things. There's a lot better stuff to see in Verona than just Juliet's balcony. Now, another tourist trap I see is when any time you're walking around and you see a gelato cart. No, 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 no. We don't do gelato carts. You go to the gelateria and you get ice cream there. And anytime the ice cream place has like crazy weird flavors, and I'm not talking like lavender and rose because that's actually normal, but it's like, Tootie, fruity, bubbly, gummily, boom. Yeah, that, that's a total touristy trappy one. But honestly, anything gelateria in a kiosk, don't do that. And actually, that's another thing that kind of tourist trappiness is if you're buying at the major sites and those kiosks, they're selling waters and snacks there. They're usually at inflated prices. So just walk a little farther away. You might find a shop that'll have water a lot cheaper. And also the gelato and the gelaterias, the actual ones will be so much better. So go there. You didn't think I'd forget this one. Another sign that you might be at a tourist restaurant is if you ever see pasta and meatballs because spaghetti and meatballs isn't really a thing a lot of places in Italy, okay? So if you see some kind of pasta and meatballs or spaghetti and meatballs, 
it might be a tourist restaurant in Italy. Now, going back to Venice, there is a tourist trap that a lot of people fall for, and that is going to do a tour of the Murano glass factories. Now, you can go to the Murano Island. There's, there's boats that'll take you out there, no problem. But don't feel like you need to sign up on a tour in Venice to make sure that's part of it, because it's about 15 to 20 minutes of actually glass blowing and glass making, which is cool, and then like two hours in the gift shop. So that gets a little frustrating, okay? Oh, another tourist trap I have here is anytime you take a tour in a big group. Listen, if you're doing a tour in Italy, always make sure you ask how many people are gonna be in this? You know, they'll say, oh, it's a semi-private tour. That's usually between eight and 22 people, okay? And sometimes a, a tour might be even more. So you'll see these big groups going around and so you don't get as much of the experience. It's just more of a lecture as you walk. So make sure you're asking because sometimes those big tour groups, you, you kind of miss out on too much. Now, another tourist trap, and this is another one of those signs you know that, hey, I shouldn't be here is you find a place that's selling cappuccino after noon, okay? Because honestly, in Italy, you don't put milk in your coffee after about 11 o'clock. So if cappuccino is on the menu, you already know it's a tourist trap. Another thing I would say is, it's not necessarily a tourist trap, it's just a tourist fact when you do come to Italy, is if you come in peak season, you know, June, July, August, prices will be high, flights will be booked out, trains will be full. It's just gonna be overwhelming in the prices. And so therefore everything almost becomes a tourist trap because people are so excited about coming to Italy. But the thing is, if you come in shoulder season, you, know, you come in September, October or April, May, you get still get great weather and great times and great food and great sights and everything's still open, but you pay a lot less for hotel rooms, for the tickets, for the trains, for the planes, all kinds of stuff. So try to avoid those peak seasons. I know sometimes you can't, but that's one of those things that really, the tourist trappiness really comes out at that time. Now, another tourist trap that you might not realize, it's more like a, not even necessarily a tourist trick, it's just a fact of Italy is, if you're paying more for your coffee to sit down than standing up. Look, sometimes there actually be two prices for your cafe or your espresso. Just take your espresso standing up and it's going to be cheaper than sitting down because if you're going to be here for a few weeks and you want to get three or four espressos a day like some people do that extra euro two can add up over time and tourists don't realize that happens so just be aware of that like tourist trappy nature of you not knowing that you should have your espresso standing up and then i think it's also important to note if you're looking for a tourist trap kind of place you're not sure about a restaurant look on the food that they have if they have food from all over Italy, it's probably a tourist trap. Because in Italy, people really eat the pastas and the foods from their local area. So if you're eating in Vicenza or, or, or Verona, it's gonna be a very different menu than if you're here in Sorrento on the Amalfi Coast. So make sure you notice like, hey, they have the same stuff I've seen all over Italy. Yeah, that might be a sign that it could be a tourist trap, okay? So what are some of the tourist traps that you saw when you were here in Italy? Because I know there's a lot more out there, whether you're in Milan or or you're in Lecce or Bari, there's more out there, but I thought these are the biggest ones that you should know before you come to Italy, because honestly, most of these things are gonna happen and you're not gonna be upset because Italy is fantastic. So I'll say bye or ciao from here on the Amalfi Coast.